Good evening, guys, and welcome. And I'm sure you have, well, you might not have recovered from yesterday's epic test win and test series win for India. It's been great over the last 24 hours to reflect on what had just taken place. Um, an amazing team performance by India where they've been or were decimated with injuries, um, dealing with COVID, uh, so much time away from home. Let's not forget that they were all over in the IPL before they even got to Australia. And so they've spent a very long period of time away from loved ones. And to go over and perform like that is simply amazing, in my opinion. And so it's been good over the last 24 hours just to reflect on this Indian team. Uh, let's look back at that first test, all out for 36. And... Um, who would have thought that they'll be winning this series from from there? And you know, a few standout performance performances um, without question on the tour. But uh, I don't know about what you guys, but this is a very special performance. I kind of look back to 2007, the T20 World Cup. Remember the very first T20 World Cup held in South Africa? Uh, India had a very young team. And I've just went back on the internet, had a look at some of the names from that team. Uh, guess who the captain was? MS Dhoni. They had Dhoni, Gambia, Irfan Pathan, Rohit Sharma. Well, he was playing that game yesterday. Yuvraj Singh, Sewag, and Dinesh Karti, just to, just to name a few. But do you remember, post that T20 World Cup, cricket just thrived. Uh, especially white ball and T20 cricket, I guess from that performance from India in that World Cup was the birthplace of the IPL. And look what that has done for the game in India and the game in general. And the feeling I have today and yesterday, when I look at that Indian young Indian side that just won this Test Series over in Australia, it sort of gives me the same feeling from when India won that T20 World Cup over in South Africa. Tell me, give, give, give me your comments. Do you, do you have that same feeling as well? Because I remember in 2007, India weren't expected to win that tournament at all. They had a young team, a very young captain. Yes, we know Dhoni is a great a, a legend of the game now, but he wasn't that in 2007. He's a young, inexperienced captain on making his way in international cricket. And it's certainly, oh, I have that same feeling now with, with this test team to what that T20 team was capable of doing in South Africa some time ago. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you and get your thoughts. Um, but one player I'm pretty keen to, just to recap and just to see where he is at on the world stage of international cricket. And the match winner yesterday, really, let's be honest, Rashad Pant. Let's just go through a few numbers, eh? Just, to, just so we've got everything out on the table. Rashad Pant. 23, the age of 23. So a very young man indeed. Uh, highest score of 159 not out. He averages 43 and a half in test cricket. 450s, 200s. Uh, not a bad start. He's a very young guy. Um, and they are some pretty healthy numbers. So let's add a little bit more weight to those stats. So let's look at his last three test matches because it's fresh in, in our mind. He, he didn't play the first test in Adelaide. Uh, we'll never forget that test as well. India all out for 36. And who would have thought what would happen after that? But he got a recall into the team for the second test. Uh, he scored 29. 29 with the bat. Only batted once in that test. Uh, third test, he got 36 and 97. That's at Sydney. A similar situation to yesterday, really, but he couldn't get the team across the line uh, in Sydney. And I just wonder, from that experience in Sydney, that obviously helped him going through something like that to perform the way he did yesterday up at the Gabba in Brisbane. Uh, so then the fourth test, uh, at the Gabba, which we've just seen, you've got 23 in the first innings and 89 uh, of 138 deliveries to win the test match for his team. So, right, let's go back over this a little bit more in a bit more detail. Age of 23, so he's a very young man. He is a very young cricketer, and like all young cricketers at that age, when they're playing international cricket, they are not the finished article. 
without question. He is not the finished article. So he will be at his best when he reaches around the age of 30, I would think. That's when he would, that's when most cricketers, and particularly batsmen, have a good understanding of their game. So he is going to learn his craft and learn batsmanship and wicket-keeping over the next four to five years. So what we see now, you would think he's going to be better in the years to come if he manages himself well and he gets good people around him. It's a scary proposition because let's look what he went through over the last couple of weeks. Pressure situations. So yesterday, you can't get more pressure than that. There's Test cricket is the hardest form of the game. T20s, uh, one-day cricket, and test cricket, is the, that's why it's called, called test cricket. It's a difficult part of the game. For an Indian player, one of the hardest places to tour is Australia because Indian players are conditioned on low, slow, turning wickets. Australia is the opposite, fast, bouncy, quick wickets. The Australian bowling attack is very good. They've got a left-arm fast bowl who bowls 145 kilometres an hour. Pat Cummins, without question, the best test bowler in world cricket at the moment. Josh Hazelwood was a player who I think is a very, very good bowler. And he was a very good bowler who was in form at the moment. He's a quality bowler. Nathan Lyon probably didn't have his best series, but he's nearly got 400 test wickets. So he's a quality bowler all the same. So... Part has scored runs on now against the best bowling attack in the world. Perhaps the New Zealand bowling attack pushes the Australian bowling attack a little bit. Or when India's at its best bowling group with Boomer and the, the group and Shami, they, they're very good as well. But so he scored runs in Aussie on a fast, bouncy wicket. So he's ticked that box. He can face fast bowling. He can face short bowling. Not only can he face, but he can pressure. That is the biggest key cause. The best players in the world can handle pressure. The different, all players can play a straight drive, can play a cut shot, can play a pull shot, uh, can, can play a full defence. All players around the world can do that. But the players who can do it under pressure are the best players in the world. And he has done that yesterday. And he has the ability, if he wanted to pull the trigger and increase the run rate, which he had to do yesterday. But noticing and looking back on yesterday's performance, he did it in his own way. And that's the most remarkable thing. He was not reckless. It was controlled. So he's obviously a very measured man, has a good understanding of what he wants to achieve with his batting, and he can handle pressure. So he's got a, a lot of aspects of good batsmanship on his side. So he's calm and he can handle pressure and he can lift the run rates. He can play in a very difficult conditions, fast, bouncy wickets, that has swing bowling and seam bowling. And we talk about play, being able to play fast bowling, but he can play spin just as good. He sweeps. He can slog sweep. He can use his feet down the ground to the spinners. He pulled the trigger on Nathan Lyon when he wanted to under a pressure situation. So we've got the fast bowling aspect covered, and then we've got the spin bowling aspect covered. So he can play both forms very, very well. And he has the ability to lift the scoring rate. And when he wants to play a defensive mindset, he has the ability to do that. So he's not a one-dimensional batter. Uh, so he's got a number of things on his side. Now, getting back to my original point, he's 23 years of age. He's already got 200. So he's still learning how to play the game. So one would imagine as time moves forward, he is going to be a better player in time when he experiences other conditions around the world. Um, just to add a little bit of weight to that, his keeping, which is obviously vitally important, um, if I've been brutally honest, I don't. I think he can keep better. And we saw, I think it was the first test match that he played, which was the second test match. He um, uh, A couple of chances went by 
And I think if he improved his fitness, he'll be a far better wicketkeeper as well. Uh, I think if he can um, lose some weight and in increase his strength, that will give him better agility uh, and better reaction time when it comes to his wicket keeping. Uh, and then you've got an all round package. You've got, you'd have a very fine wicket keeper, a person who can bat six, five if you wanted to, seven, uh, to come in in any situation, whether it's against spin bowling or fast bowling, uh, assess the situation, be calm, execute his skills under pressure. Uh, so he's a very good all-round cricketer, and he has a nice demeanour about him as well. I liked his interview after the game when he talked about all he wants to do is win games of cricket for India. And that is fantastic to hear because it wasn't about him. The moment wasn't about... We all thought the moment was about him, but for him, it was about winning a game of cricket for his country and for India. So that's what I really like about him. He obviously has a nice way about him where the team is first and winning the game of cricket is first and it's not about him. So he, that tells me he's got leadership qualities because he is thinking about others. So if he can really uh, work on his fitness, uh, his keeping will improve from that. Then I think his batting will even get better. As he experiences more conditions around the world, he is going to become a better player. And I think what's going to be really important for him as well is if he, he can have people, which this is obvious as also, pushing him for his spot in his team. Now, his spot is pretty secure. There's no doubt about that. But people really perform well when there's good competition around you. So if the BCCI can create good, healthy competition around Pant that can keep elevating his game to that international standard, it's only going to bode really well for him in the future. Now, I've heard a lot of comparisons over, well, especially the last 24 hours, how he's the next Adam Gilchrist. All those things I've just talked about, about being exceptionally fit, uh, really disciplined to work on his game, uh, assess situations really well, good leadership qualities, uh, play fast bowling and the short ball well, can play spin really well. well Adam Gilchrist possessed all of those things. And without question, Rashad Pant can possess all those things as well. But Adam Gilchrist had a whole career doing that. So Pant's only 23 years of age, so his whole career is in front of him. I just don't hope he gets labelled to be the next Adam Gilchrist because I think he could be a far better version of Adam Gilchrist and he needs to be him, himself Richard Punt. He needs to be the best Richard Punt, uh, not pretend or try to be like other cricketers who have played the game before. So I'm really keen to hear your thoughts on that. Um, the comparison of players from different eras and trying to compare individuals to each other, I, I don't like to buy into that. I, a big fan of the individual trying to be the best cricketer they possibly can be and try to um, keep their feet firmly on the ground and looking at their next step ahead, not try to get too far in front of themselves. So if Pant, because there's going to be a lot of expectation on him now when he gets back to India, there's going to be a lot of media about him, expectation to perform. So it's going to be interesting to see how he copes with that side of the game because that's another aspect of the game that people like Adam Gilchrist coped with really well, just to be measured, to be calm, and just to focus on the next step ahead. So both feet are firmly planted on the ground in their cricketing career. But it's, well, well it was fascinating to watch a young man who is, let's just recap that, 23 years of age, handled a pressure situation. He was very calm had the ability to lift the, uh, the run rate when it was needed to be lifted, uh, playing for his country with pride, playing about for his team and for his country. Uh, I, I think that was an amazing performance. And it's a performance that all young cricketers around the world need to look up to. But for Rishabh Pant, I hope he keeps his feet firmly on the ground and he's only going to get better and better 
And if he stays fit and healthy and keeps working on his game, who knows what these numbers in the hundreds column and the average column and the highest score column will look like in 10 years' time. So thank you, Rashad Pant, for entertaining us yesterday.